Effective equipment and machine guarding has become such an integral part of efficient workplace operations that it is not perceived to be a major safety issue in many organisations. However, horrific accidents still occur. When guards are not in place, or they are not used correctly, people can be pulled into machines, have limbs amputated and body parts crushed, or suffer numerous other injuries. It is therefore critical that we are aware of and understand the following issues. Why guards are used. The risks associated with mechanical hazards. The requirements for effective machine guarding. The different types of guards and their functions. And what safe work procedures should be adopted when working with equipment and machinery. So what are machine guards actually used for? And the short answer is that guards are designed to prevent contact with a hazard or hazards. Commonly this would be moving mechanical parts, but guards are also used to prevent contact with power sources, not only electrical but also hydraulic and pneumatic, hot and cold temperature hazards, and so on. Guards are also used to protect an operator from waste materials and byproducts from machine processes. And finally, guards are used for general protection should a machine breakdown or malfunction occur. Let's now look in detail at the main group of risks that guards are used for, mechanical hazards. Mechanical hazards exist wherever equipment and machinery is in use. Conveyor belt systems, chain and sprocket drives, gears and cogs, pulley and V-belt drives, presses, punches, guillotines, grinders, lathes and so on are all examples of equipment and machinery that exhibit mechanical hazards. The risks associated with mechanical hazards will vary according to the equipment and machinery itself and the level of hazard exposure. Risks can be categorised in the following groups. Entanglement risks, stabbing and puncture risks, crushing risks, and cutting and tearing risks. So let's take a look at each of these in more detail. Entanglement injuries result from a wide range of situations involving one or more moving surfaces. Some common causes of entanglement accidents in the workplace are contact with rotating and tangentially moving surfaces, for example, those surfaces associated with conveyor belts being caught by projecting surfaces and or moving parts, for example, an exposed drive shaft. Being caught between rotating and fixed surfaces, for example, exhaust or ventilation fans, and being caught by moving materials or products, for example, products in a production line. Stabbing and puncture injuries usually result from contact with rapidly moving parts. This includes equipment such as drills, presses, punches and nail guns. Puncture injuries can also result from flying objects. A common piece of equipment which can cause this type of injury is a bench grinder. Crushing injuries are caused when a body part is caught and compressed between two hard surfaces. The hazard is often referred to as a pinch point. Examples of equipment and machinery that can cause crushing injuries are presses, crushers, drive belts, drive chains, pulleys and most types of hydraulically operated equipment. Cutting injuries are usually the result of contact with sharp objects or rapidly moving machine blades. These injuries are commonly associated with such items as bench saws, wood planers, band saws, circular saws, disc grinders and jig saws. Tearing injuries are similar to cutting injuries, but instead of a body part coming into contact with a sharp object, it comes into contact with a dull or blunt object. Tearing of the skin and muscle occurs as the object is pushed forcefully into a part of the body. Another type of tearing injury is degloving. Commonly these accidents occur when a gloved hand comes into contact with a rotating object that has a projecting surface.
So what are the elements that combine to produce an effective and efficient machine guard? Ideally, guards are an integral part of the machine design and are installed when the piece of machinery or equipment is originally made. Guards should be made from appropriate materials, be strong and robust, and their design should ensure that the guards themselves do not add any unnecessary hazard. That is, sharp edges and rough surfaces should be avoided. Guards with moving parts must be kept in good condition. And guards which are added to existing equipment or machinery should not weaken the structural integrity of the original equipment. There are many different types of guards which are used in a variety of situations and for a variety of purposes. A fixed guard, by definition, has no moving parts. It is not connected with the operation of the equipment and should not be able to be removed by hand. In reality, many fixed guards are made with hinged openings for general maintenance or repair work and it is important that these openings are fixed in a suitable manner at all other times. Distance guards are simply barriers. They are designed to keep people a certain distance away from a hazard. They can be temporary or permanent. If a distance guard is permanent, it is by definition a fixed guard. It will often be made of mesh, the distance from the hazard determining the mesh size. Again, adjustable guards do not affect the working of the equipment, but are moved into position by the operator to offer maximum protection from the particular task. Frequently, these guards are transparent and are seen commonly, for example, on metal and woodworking machinery. Self-adjusting guards adjust or align themselves according to the size of the material being passed through or into the equipment. A circular saw is a common example of a self-adjusting guard. Interlocked guards, as the name implies, are guards that work together with the equipment. They are directly related to either the power supply for the equipment, or the actual movement of the equipment, or both the power supply and movement. Clearly, in many situations, guards are open frequently or moved. Interlocked guards have essentially two functions to control. First, the machine will not start until the guard is closed. And second, the machine will have fully stopped before the guard can be opened. Many interlocked devices are used, including a variety of switches, such as magnetic switches and cam-operated limit switches mechanical linkages between the power supply or transmission and the guard, key systems and time delay systems. Trip devices are used to ensure that the approach to a hazard beyond a certain point either stops or stops and reverses the equipment or machine. Commonly trip devices would include such items as trip bars and wires, photoelectric devices, and pressure-sensitive mats and strips. As we can see, equipment and machine guarding is quite a complex issue. But even so, guards do not stop or minimise all the potential hazards associated with the use of equipment and machinery. Other safety measures are also used, including such techniques as using two-handed controls, alarms and emergency stop buttons and wires. This leads us to the importance of following established safe work procedures whenever working with or around equipment or machinery. The basic principles of these procedures include always conduct a thorough pre-start check before using any piece of equipment. Obviously this check will vary depending on the equipment but should result in establishing that the machine is in proper working order has no fluid leaks and all guards are operational and in good order. Ensuring good housekeeping practices are maintained. 
Make sure that not only are general waste products removed, but also tools and other items cannot be knocked or dropped into moving machine parts. Always obey posted warning signs and take appropriate action in connection with any warning device. Never wear jewellery or loose-fitting clothing near moving machine parts. Also, long hair should be restrained. And never operate any piece of equipment if the guards have been removed, tampered with or bypassed in any way. Guards are used to protect people from hazards. And remember that the protection is not just from mechanical hazards, but also from a wide range of other potential hazards. Temperature hazards, power hazards, chemical hazards, and even light hazards such as lasers are just a few examples. Effective equipment and machine guarding is fundamental for ensuring and maintaining high industrial safety standards.